Who else likes this truck as much as I do? Hey, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Yep, you too. Oh, let's get it. Straight into unboxing. We are ready to get this car loud ASAP. I've had it a little longer than I'd like to with keeping it as quiet as it is. So if you guys want to buy a Catalyst downpipe, hit up CFM. I'll leave a link in the description. Let's check this thing out. Before I have to disclose, this is for off-road use only. Use it at your own risk. Make sure it's legal in the city you're in. And if you're in California, you gotta work around it. You might be able to register your car at your uncle's house that lives in a cabin up north and you don't have emissions. Do what you gotta do, my friends. Now, as far as downpipes go, the Focus ST does have a smaller one than normal, which is very nice for install. Oh, the loud mechanism. We got a new gasket and a bolt. We've got our CFM card and a receipt. We are looking at a good looking downpipe. We've got our pieces a little bit of flexible. Then we have our stainless. We have our bung for our O2 sensor. We've got the clamp for the um, turbo, and we have our fitting for our cat back. So it's gonna be positioned in there like so. Oh, like this, it's definitely like this. Diving right into this install, this is the first ever solo downpipe install I've ever done. I'm kind of nervous right now, but I think I should be able to pull it off. So let's hope that we can get it done tonight because I don't even want to drive another freaking mile without this thing being louder. So let's get to it. First thing we're doing is going under the hood. I'm taking you under here with my phone because the O2 sensor, SST, grabs it, you know your way in here. Now, you might have a Symposer Delete. Oh, I have a Symposer Delete, so that plug is that tube is plugged here. It's gonna be right here. So you're gonna need to pull that out and move it out of the way. But if you look on the back side of this, this is the plug that hangs, the downpipe hangs on, and then it's clipped to this plastic mount. Ah, oh, okay, I'm free. O2 sensor is unplugged, so when we pull the downpipe out, we can pull the whole thing with the O2 sensor out. It's always easy to get the O2 sensor out after you have the pipe out. So now with what tools we need, we have an extension for 3 8 ratchet. I got three of them connecting. We need at least 12 inches long, 3 8 ratchet. We've got a 7 8 O2 sensor socket. We've got a 10 millimeter, 13, 14, and 15 millimeter, a T30 Torx, a adapter for the T30 to put on our mini impact if we want it, or a wrench or ratchet if we need it. We've got a 13 and 14 millimeter wrench and that is pretty much it. The first thing we're gonna do is take off the cat back from the down pipe. But if you guys didn't know and you're new here, this channel is all about building confidence in the garage and learning everything we need to know before buying each car model to modifying in the garage ourselves. So if you are looking for one, you know what to look for, you know your way around the car, you know how to know if it's modded or stock. And then if you have a car already, then you obviously can watch the videos and have enough confidence to go in the garage and do it yourself and decide not to take it somewhere, but to do it yourself with your homies or by yourself like I'm doing right now, because it's, that's what it's all about. That's what cars are fun for, and they give us something to work on, and then we get to enjoy it after, and it's a very satisfying process. So I encourage all you guys to get out in the garage, save up to get a car if you don't have one, and hopefully if you watch these videos, you can buy one of these cars and know exactly what you want to do. So let's get into it with taking the cat back off. I do have the MBRP cat back, so I know that the bolts that I have at least, I'm not sure if stock is the same, it might be 13 and 14, but both sides are 14. So I'm gonna take my 14 socket, the 14 wrench, I'm gonna take my ratchet, I'm gonna take this guy as well, and then I'll get the breaker bar if I need it. I almost forgot the most important part. Make sure you grab some safety glasses. Also from the link in the description, I do have a link below to all tools you need to begin building confidence in the garage. It'll be very obvious in the description. And make sure you grab some of these. You don't want some rust or dirt in your eye. You're gonna be sending yourself to urgent care 
or a eye place to get it out. Now I did already take off one side because I wanted to test the water to see how rusted it is before I get into this myself to make sure we weren't gonna have to torch anything because I was not in the mood to grind anything tonight. So uh, pray for me that we won't have to do that. Oh, nice and easy. Get out of the way of this dirt. This is what I like to see. Our cat back is loose, good to go. Next up, we need to remove these trays because we have to get this crossbar off. And yours may or may not have this. Now, I've got the biggest flathead I could find on my impact, little baby impact to get these weird plastic clips off of. You have to let it down easy, these things are weird. All right, that's one side. Next up, I've got my T30 Torx, and we're gonna remove this cover that we're looking at right here because we're gonna need access to the mount that holds the stock down pipe on that is rather large, it needs the support. When I'm working on cars, I put all my bolts in a magnetic bowl. If you're new here, um, you haven't seen this before, but this is something that is awesome that is also in that list of tools. You'll never lose another bolt because that can be the difference between finishing the job or not. This bracket will not come off anymore because we need to loosen the downpipe and get it enabled to move around. Now, most people would have already took that brace across, but I'm just getting all the hard work out of the way first. Next up, let's loosen the V-band. I got my extension on, and it'll go right to there. All right, our V-band is loose enough. Now we got that bracket off. We're not gonna need that anymore. And now it's time to move on to down here. So this brace are 15 millimeters. I'm telling you, if you don't buy one of these mini impacts, you're gonna regret it. That's for darn sure. Let's look how easy this is making it. All righty, now for the hard part. Up here, there's two wire clips. Make sure you get your O2 sensor out of it before you go any farther, so you don't yank it. And try and pull that wire through. I don't really know how to explain this, but if you follow the wire up from the O2 sensor from this angle, and you get your arm up in there real far, and you be very patient, and you look for the skinny tab on the plug. I'll show you when we get it out. You squeeze as hard as you can, and you just wiggle, 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 wiggle. And then, when it releases like bruh, that was like the hardest part. That you might get frustrated with, but just be patient. Look for the little skinny tab and press as hard as your fingers can on it. And it'll, it'll push it off and then slide out. All right, the down pipe is free. I'm gonna pull off these guys, the 10 millimeters. Give us a little more room to work with. Ooh. Do not lose this for the V-band v clip. Oh, let's go. Stock catted, three inch catless. This is what the difference looks like. As you can see, I'm a little worn out. I'm pretty relieved. We got one more step. Let's see if we can get her done. As far as getting buildup and rust off of bolts to make sure they break loose, I usually get a uh, PB blaster, but I got the Seafoam Deep Creep. Let me know what you guys use in the comments. I'm, I've been trying this out. I'm not sure if I like it better or not yet, but it's what I got with me, so I'm gonna use it. All right, I got one off. Let's see if I can get this one on camera. Oh yeah. 
let's go. <laughs> I didn't expect to do this tonight and I don't have any anti-seize or else I'd put some on before I put it in the new downpipe. So just know that if you plan on leaving it on for a long time, put anti-seize on these threads. Oh shoot, this one is from the lower. Make sure you put this back on the right ones. This one's lower. All right, that sucker's tight. Make sure you put your, your ring on, and let's put the V-band on. Boys, we're in the clear. I got both clips back in. Both are plugged in. I'm gonna hook up this cat back real quick with the new bolts and gasket. These new bolts are both 15 millimeter on both sides. So I got my 15 millimeter wrench. Because when you grab a pair of these, get you right on the edge, get your nut on. I'm really enjoying this home stretch right now. I'd rather work on cars with friends, but doing this myself, I'm rather shocked. Oh, the moment we've been waiting for. Dear God, thank you for giving me the strength, for the courage, perseverance, and patience. Amen. Fire it up on stock map, then throw a cob off the shelf map like a stage one. Um, just to cruise around low boost until I get it tuned. Um, I was informed from Alan from Edge Auto Sport that these, since these are torque targeted or load targeted ECU strategies, that this car will not kill itself by any means at all. So don't stress about um, running it on the stock map with Catalyst. You just don't want to push the limits unless you have a good tune. Pushing the limits with an off the shelf map, it's a little more prone to issues here and there just be careful. If I don't throw a code, I'm probably gonna run the stock tune um, until I get the pro tune and then push it. Oh, I can't wait. I don't even wanna press the button, this is awesome. I did not think I'd be able to finish this tonight. All right. Oh yeah, we're breathing. Dude, we gotta cut some mufflers out. In one of the next videos, we're gonna be straight piping the frick out of this thing, that's for sure. I'm, this is way quieter than I thought. My other buddies that we did in a previous video, we deleted the muffler while we were at it, and he did have the same cat back I have. But I'm gonna let it warm up, give it some juice, and see what we got. Oh, way more turbo. Oh, you feel a lot of it. Oh yeah. You can hear the turbo a ton. All right, let's take it for a rip. Let's talk here again about the torque target. So the ignition timing, Everything with the ECU is based on when it hits a certain torque level. So it doesn't matter what mods you add to it, the faster it hits that torque level, it already knows what it needs to do. So as soon as it hits a certain torque limit, it, which is peak horsepower on the stock tune, it's gonna, just gonna stop there and just basically limit everything safely. So it's not really a big stress to run mods on a car like this. Now I don't advise installing a bunch of parts, going full bolt-ons and then getting a tune. Like I would get a tune as you go. It's only gonna help you make your engine last longer but I don't have to stress too hard about driving it and getting into boost a little bit because as long as it hits, you know, it doesn't over boost or anything weird, I'm not gonna go hard, that hard on it. It'll be totally fine, so let's take it for a rip. And if that doesn't make complete sense, let me know in the comments. I'm sure some of you kind of grasp the idea if you have a little bit of tuning knowledge, but um, we'll go into it more later, but this is a spoolie boy. You hear the turbo a lot now. I can feel the vibration now in my feet in the pedals. Getting a little pops and bangs. 
It seems to be on the stock team that when I was like 90% throttle, it was running a smidge lean by the AFR as like a right around a 12. So I'm gonna go ahead, run me stage one, 91 octane, let's hit the about stage one, slot two economy, slot one performance intended for an otherwise stock focus T. Be cool the stock is awesome, the stock intake, Cobb panel, okay. Boost dynamic up to 21.5 peak PSI pressure, plus or minus three PSI is needed to achieve load, torque, and airflow targets. All right, let's do that. Now it's gonna hesitate starting, but that's how it works. Fourteen point seven idle, check. Charge air temps, solid. I have some sort of rattle in my exhaust in the back I gotta figure out. It's been going on since I bought the car, but it's gotten worse now. It's got a little more pressure behind it. So our OAR is dropping, negative 0.75. We want it to go down. It starts at zero, that's our base. If it likes the fuel, it goes down. Tune is a lot faster already. Oh wow, yeah, this thing drives nice now. In all of these maps, you have two slots. Number one is performance, number two is economy. So if you hit cancel and then you go one or two, you can see the tack change right up there. So we want to say, make sure we're on performance. I learned how that works. So when we uh, get an E85 tune and a performance tune, we'll have three slots. And we'll have one for E, one for 91, and one for economy. Obviously, the tune isn't perfect. So we're going to be going um, next with talking to Alan at Edge Autosport about tuning this. So stay tuned for that. And uh, we'll be straight piping this thing as, you know, relatively soon. I'm not going to go too long. You guys know me. So get down to that, karmaspeed.com, go grab a t-shirt if you like this content, if you learn anything new, that's what it's all about, it's about building confidence, learning one car at a time, so I appreciate you guys stopping by, I'll see you in the next one, hit that subscribe button so you can see that straight pipe, peace. These cars are so much fun.